Thanks for coming. Um, so yeah, my name is Julian. Uh, it's great to be back in, in Berlin. I was at the, uh, the very first Berlin Buzzwords years and years ago. So it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my talk this year, it's about um, Euro Frontier and Open Source API and implementation for Crow Frontiers. So what is a Crow Frontier? It's, uh, it's very simple. It's basically the information that a crawler, a web crawler, has about the URLs it has visited or the ones it, you know, it needs to visit. Um, and you can think of it in, in this way where you, um, you start with a number of seed URLs, your starting point for the crawl, and then the, the crawler iteratively sort of expands and as it discovers new pages, um, some, so some links are sort of recursive or some are not followed. Um, and yeah, the frontier sort of expands over time as the, the crawl grows. Um, it's basically a crawl frontier. My motivation for this work was that um, although there are, there are plenty of open source crawlers around, so, you know, there's Apache Nudge, there is, um, what's the other one, Scrapey, um, Heretrix, my, my very own Storm crawler. Um, all the, these solutions have their own approach to how they deal with the frontier. Um, they have their own solution. So what I was trying to do with this work was to, to see if we could find a common approach to dealing with the crawl frontier. Could we find a consensus on what an API would look like? You know, what actions do web crawlers typically do when they, they deal with the frontier? And ideally, could we get you know, a good implementation that would be useful um, for crawlers, something scalable and robust um, that people could, um, could use? So URL Frontier, um, as, a, as a project, is um, funded by an organization called NLNet. They're based in the, the Netherlands. Um, and it was funded as part of the NGI Zero Discovery program. Um, and I was very fortunate to get funding for not, not once, but twice for this work. So the initial project ran uh, last year, and, and we're now in the second iteration of the project. So it is open source, and it is under Apache license. And it's a, a sub-project of um, something called Crawler Commons, which is, if you don't know it, um, have a look. It, it's a great little project. It's about providing uh, resources in Java for web crawlers that web crawlers can use to do the things they typically do, like passing sitemaps, passing robots.txt, and so on. So having your frontier as part of Crawler Commons made, made a lot of sense. So the, uh, the project is um, pretty straightforward. It's organized in, in four different modules, the main one being the API itself, but also um, there's also a service implementation, or rather implementations, plural. There's also a command line interface tool and a test suite, um, which is used to check that the implementations behave as, as expected. So let's start with the, uh, with the API. Um, the API is uh, defined using gRPC. Um, so with gRPC, you define you know, the services and the messages used for the services using protocol buffers. Um, gRPC is high performance. It uses HTTP2. And, and obviously, it is also cross-language. So you can, from that sort of neutral text sort of definition with protocol buffers, you can generate code in, in various programming languages. One thing that uh, gRPC gives us is also the ability to have streaming methods, which is really, really useful for a um, for web crawler. So from the, uh, the gRPC, uh, and we'll have a closer look at it in, in a minute, we, um, we can generate code, which is useful for writing a client or, or, um, or a URL frontier service. And uh, this is deployed uh, in Maven Central. So if you use Java, you can very easily import the, um, the library. The main concepts in, uh, with URL Frontier are that the, uh, the URLs are organized into queues. Um, and each queue is, has a key which can be anything you want, but it's typically the host name for the URL or the domain or the IP address or whatever, whatever you want. Within the queue, the uh, URLs have, um, have a priority. This priority is like a, a scheduling date. So it's when you want this URL to be fetchable by a crawler. Um, so for instance, you could, you know, you could say, um, you could tell that a URL needs to be 
revisited in two days' time. Imagine there's been you know, an HTTP error or something. Yeah, you could you could reschedule it in the future. So within the queue, the URLs are sorted uh, in, in this way. Um, also, what you get with URL Frontier is that it will enforce some sort of politeness. So. To give you an example, it tracks the uh, the URLs being currently processed by crawlers. Uh, it will make sure that no more URLs for a particular queue are, are provided to crawlers. Um, it also enforces um, a reasonable delay between calls from a from a particular queue. This way, you won't be in a situation where the crawler so is getting loads of URLs for a single host, host a single site, um, and and you also get this way a very good diversity of, of, of sources, which is ideal for the web crawler, so it can politely crawl. Um, so with URL Frontier, in the way you delegate part of the, the politeness logic of the crawler, you delegate that to URL Frontier, you make your code a little bit simpler. So this is um, like a quick overview of some of the uh, the methods defined by the uh, the API by URL Frontier. Um, so you can see it's things like list queues. So you ask the uh, the, the Frontier to um, give you the list of all the queues it has internally. But the two main ones obviously are get URLs and put URLs where you, you know, get stuff in and out of the of the Frontier. Let's have a closer look at get URLs. So this is what the message that is sent by the crawler or by the client looks like. So it's um, um, a number of, you can define a maximum number of URLs per queue to retrieve, uh, also a maximum number of queues to query it and to get results from in, in one go. You can also query for a particular queue based on if you give it a key um, and so on. And what you get in return is a stream of messages like 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 this one uh, where obviously you have the url to be fetched uh, the key it came from corresponding to the queue arbitrary metadata so that's typically the stuff that the crawler would have found about a url and which, which you can store um, in in the frontier and so on just to illustrate the uh, basic interactions between a crawler and, and the frontier. So again, starting from seed URLs, you would um, do the, the initial step called the injection very often, is to, to inject the seed URLs into the frontier. You'd use, usually do that on the command line um, using the client, um, and you'd call the, uh, the put URLs method. And then when the, um, the crawler kicks in and starts doing its work, um, let's see how it interacts with, with the frontier. Here, yeah, I'm not talking ab about a particular crawler, uh, although it does look a bit like storm crawler in the way it, it um, breaks things down. But just yeah, you know, split it into three abstract steps. So the first one, spout, is the the bit that gets the uh, the, the work to do. It gets the URLs, so it queries URL frontier for for um, work to do. Um, it gets, uh, as I said earlier, a stream of of of, um, of URLs. It's good because it's it's you know it's not really blocking. It just gets the, gets work to do as it, uh, as it comes, which is nice. And then the the spout would typically pass that onto a fetcher to get the uh, the, the pages. And once the uh, the fetcher the fetcher can then update your frontier. Imagine you have a redirection. You know, um, it could go straight to the frontier. Say right, I'll update this URL. It had, you know, HTTP code, so and so, and so on. But often you would get onto the next stage of parsing the the document, where you, we extract the art links, and that's where we get loads of calls to. Um, we stream loads of of, of um, information to the put URLs method for every single art link that has been found within within that page. And then typically the crawler then does it whatever it's meant to do. Often it's indexing into Solo or Elasticsearch or you know, the uh, the engine of your of your um, choice. And then at the end it will just update the information for um, each URL that it has um, completed this way. So I mentioned earlier there's um, the command line interface, um, very very straightforward, implemented in Java using the, uh, the the code stubs generated from the from the uh, the API uh, from the um, protocol buffer file we saw earlier um, it's not something you use you use for crawling but it's more um, well as we've seen for the seed inject injection but also debugging and monitoring the, uh, the 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 state of the of the frontier 
uh, you'll, you'll notice the, the commands mimic the, uh, the methods defined in, the, in your URL frontier. Um, now the um, other interesting bit, of course, the implementations. So the uh, the first two listed were during the were done during the first phase of the the project um, last year. So I'll skip the memory one. It's not very interesting. It's not scalable. It's just for testing. But the one that was um, like the end result of the first phase of the project last year was the um, an implementation based on RocksDB. Um, which is persisted. So if you, you, know, you turn the frontier off and then you turn it back on, then you know, it has, hasn't lost anything. But this one is not distributed or the content is not replicated. But this one is pretty solid. It's been used, as we'll see in a minute, it's been used quite, quite heavily and, and with you know, good results. Now, this year, with the second phase of the project, there's been more of a focus on um, trying to distribute things. And we have two implementations, well, two and a half. Uh, one is a distributed version of the RocksDB implementation. So that's, again, persisted. There's distribution, but it's not replicated, which means that if the other frontier dies, then that section of the, the, the frontier that it's you know, in charge of won't be available until that uh, instance restarts. There's also one um, based on Apache Ignite, which does the replication. So if, if um, um, an instance of the frontier were to die, then the, uh, the data it has is replicated by another node, and this, that node will take over in serving the results. So these two, um, these two implementations are you know, still a work in progress. Um, the um, sharded RocksDB one is probably a bit more advanced compared to the Ignite uh, version. Uh, one other thing worth mentioning is that there's, there's another implementation which is not, strictly speaking, part of the project, um, but it's one based on open search. And it's some work I am doing for, for a client of mine, um, pre-search. So if you don't know pre-search, pre check them out. They, do, uh, they have pretty um, ambitious plans. They are, they're pretty cool. Um, and as part of the, the work I'm doing with them, we um, we did that implementation using open search and, and th that one takes all the bo boxes. So it's you know, persisted, but also distributed and replicated. And it uses a totally different approach from the other ones. But all of them, of course, are totally compatible with the API. And, and every single one of them will work in the, in the same way as far as your crawler is concerned. So using it is um, straightforward. You can just... Um, pull the, uh, the image from Docker, and then just on, on one command, just run it, and then you have a, a working instance of, of a frontier which you can use straight away for, for crawling. So as part of the, um, you know, the, the first phase of the, the, the project, the, uh, the, the last bit was to, to check it at scale with a, a large-scale crawl, um, just to make sure that things worked and that you know, some of some of my assumptions were <laughs> valid. So for that, I used um, Stormcrawler, which I mentioned earlier, which is a um, distributed web crawler based on Apache Storm. So something I've been working on for the last probably eight, nine years. Um, and for, the, uh, for this um, experiment, the, the hardware was um, provided by Fed for Fire, which was a, a European project. Um, so, so we got sponsoring for, from, from them to do, uh, to do that. Uh, and the, the, the crawl was running on, um, on a cluster of machines in, um, on, on a test bed called Virtual Wall 2 in Belgium. So we had um, Apache Storm installed on those nodes, uh, which is needed for Stormcrawler. So we, have five, we had five nodes for crawling, and then a single node to host uh, URL Frontier. Because you know, at the time, in the version 1 of the project, we had only the uh, non-distributed version. Uh, and, and the implementation was the, uh, the, the RocksDB one. Uh, the modest, um, the, the, sorry, the hardware on uh, Virtual War 2 was relatively modest, you know, not, nothing to write home about, but still pretty decent. Um, the code of the experiments is, um, is available on, on GitHub, and what uh, we did was that we took uh, some stats from the Common Crawl project. So again, it's another, another project. If you don't know about it, have a look. Ap absolutely fantastic. They provide for free, on a monthly basis, billions of web pages that you can use for 
your experiments or for whatever you, whatever you want. Um, and by the way, they use stone crawler as well for one of their <laughs> crawls. Um, so going starting from that list of a top one million seed list, uh, we crawled with a maximum depth of, of five steps from the seeds and generated web archives, which is the standard used by in the web archiving community uh, on, on Amazon S3. Um, and, and the idea is that Common Crawl will, at some point, make that available as part of their data sets as well. So we really wanted to do not just run an experiment to make sure that your frontier worked, but also make sure that the, uh, the outcomes were, were usable. So we let that run for several weeks, on and off, because I was fixing bugs in, in, uh, as, as I was finding them. But by the end of it, we had fetched 354 million URLs, 1.2 billion URLs had been discovered, but not yet fetched, of course, because of the politeness. You know, if, you, if you find a pretty heavy site in, in volume, then you know, if you process, process it politely, it does take time. Um, and yes, we had a pretty large RocksDB on, on disk and nearly 37 terabytes of work files on S3. So that was you know, quite a success. You know, all this, like the 1.5 billion URLs were just on a single instance of URL Frontier with RocksDB. And that, that, so that was pretty good. And it proved that you know, it was pretty, pretty solid. Now, the, uh, the current work with URL Frontier, so as I mentioned, there's, um, the, there's a new version of the project. And we are, we're getting there. They were nearly, nearly finished, I think. Uh, the first stage was about improving the um, we're adding functionalities for, uh, to make it easy to monitor um, and, and report um, things with uh, URL Frontier, um, make it more, although I hate the term, enterprise-like. Um, so that's done. Um, so for instance, being able to, um, to export metrics to Prometheus and display them with Grafana, that sort of stuff. Uh, there's also a bit about multi-tenancy, so having within one frontier, having different, um, let's call them logical crawls, um, so that's done as well. Uh, I mentioned already the uh, discovery and clustering, and, and the bit we're working on now is you know, making it even more robust and even, even more resilient in case of, of failure. So that's work in, pro in progress. Um, next steps, so I'll probably be running another similar large-scale crawl to make sure that you know, it, it works fine in, in, in distributed mode, um, but also get more crawlers to, to use uh, your frontier. So obviously we already have Storm Crawler, uh, but there's also been some work on uh, using it with Crawler4j. Uh, if you look at the, um, so my company's website, Digital Pebble, there's, we have a blog, and one of our guests wrote a blog about how he, he used uh, um, URL Frontier with Crawler4j. Um, and that was great because it, it, it validated that you know, it allows you to reduce the amount of code you have in your crawler by just delegating it. Um, and there, there has been um, work and in initial attempts to do to use it with Heretrix and Scrapey. So I'm, I'm hopeful that you know, there'll be more in that, that direction. But yeah, the, the, what I really want to um, to, uh, to, to increase is getting more people involved. Um, so I listed on, on the wiki, there are, um, I've listed a number of ways in which people get involved. You know, it ranges from just giving it a try to you know, talking to your local um, dev group about it and, and so on. Um, so yeah, you'll find them listed over there. And that, yeah, that's it from, from me today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for the talk, Julian. Um, so maybe we can have one quick question and then we go to the break. I'll bring you the mic. Thanks, Julian, for the nice talk and the great work. Uh, I was wondering what are your thoughts on um, URL do duplication and URL normalization? Where do you see them fitting in in your architecture? And, and normalization, did you say? Uh, yeah, de yeah, deduplication okay. and yeah. then normalization. Okay, so the uh, deduplication is, is, you know, that is something that, yes, the frontier takes care of. Obviously, you know, if you send the same URL twice, it's, the implementation has to recognize that 
it already knows that URL. So that's, yeah, that's taken care of. The normalization is something um, same as for the filtering, for instance. Yeah, you could decide that not to keep some URLs. The normalization is um, part of that, but that's external to the other uh, frontier. It's more the crawler's resp responsibility to normalize the URLs and, and filter the ones that it doesn't need. But the deduplication, yes, it is assumed that uh, a valid URL frontier sort of implementation will take care of the deduplication. All right. Um, so for the sake of time, um, I'll direct you to Julian. I think he'll be around. Yeah, um, for me. You can catch up with him. Um, let's thank Julian one more time. Thank you.